is Jen Richardson, co-founder of Rumble's Paleo, and welcome to the Paleo for You Facebook Live Show. We're into week three, and for those of you who are used to this show already, we are in the pre-show. So we're here talking about today's topic, which is obviously something totally spectacular and delicious, as always, and you can see it right there. We're talking cake. Um, that's what we're talking about before we get into the show. And hello, I can see people on already. Hello, Selena. Hello, Denise. Hello, Kobe. I'm sure Maxine is there. I can only see three people popping up. Those people who are here, can you write a yes in the comments if you can hear me? Let's get technicalities organized. Hi, oh, actually, and I need to point out something. We have a new staff member at Rumbles. And she is helping me tonight. Maxine is now employed by Rumbles Paleo and she um, has come on board to help me with social media and doing Facebook and Instagram and all those sorts of things. So if I don't manage to see your message, didn't, um, not Denise, uh, Maxine will, will reply to you as much as possible because sometimes I find it really hard to keep up with all your comments there, which is awesome because it means we're having such a beautiful conversation. Hello, Nerida. Hi, Michael. No cricket on tonight. No cricket. <laughs> I got it right. It's not the tennis. <laughs> um, and beautiful. Yes. So Maxine will be replying to you guys in the comments and I'll just be chatting away. And we are talking cake. We're talking donut muffins. Now, I was just going to do a show, show on muffins, but I was making these muffins the other day and I was like, these things taste like donuts. They look like donuts. Let's call them donut muffins. And that is what we're talking about tonight. Cake. So could you tell me what was your favorite cake growing up? As a kid, you know, we've all had lots of birthdays and I bet you there was that one cake that you had that your mom or dad or nana or family member used to make you that you just adored. Mine was, um, what's it called? Chocolate ripple cake. As a kid growing up, I loved that cake. I used to beg my mum to make it for me and coat it with peppermint crisps or a Viennetta. I used to love it when she'd get a Viennetta and stick candles in it for our birthday. What was your favourite cake? Michael's was Christmas cake. Michael, I wonder if you made the Janice Christmas cake this year. That was a good one. Kobe's was chocolate cake. Any, anyone, what about those McDonald's ice cream cakes? Did anybody love those? I used to love those cakes. Sand cake, Nerida. I've never heard of sand cake. Has anyone else heard of sand cake? What on earth is a sand cake? Please let us know. Rhonda was another chalk ripple cake. Woohoo! Rhonda, we have so much in common. It's crazy when you write comments that we're just like, whoa, the same, the same. <laughs> so, um, Natalie was cheesecake. Um, and isn't it grand? That in a paleo way of eating, you can eat those raw cashew cheesecakes. There's a really great substitute for the traditional dairy type of cheesecake. And Michael says, my daughter made it for me. Oh, the Janice Christmas cake? Did your daughter make the Janice Christmas cake? I think that's what you're talking about there. So banana cake was Denise's favorite with chocolate icing. So many different favorites there. So our countdown is coming down. We're at the 10 second mark, which means we're going to get into the show. Maxine says, thanks guys. Sorry, was having issues with getting on. Oh, I'm not sure what that conversation is about. But anyway, timer is counted down. And um, just so you know, I don't have my normal attire on tonight, my normal Rumblers t-shirt, because I went outside to do something and my neighbor started talking to me and he had a few stubbies and he was just like, rah, 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 rah. and I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to go. And he wouldn't let me go. So I just ran in and here we are. So let's start the show. Welcome to the Paleo For You show. I am Jen Richards, co-founder of Rumbles Paleo and creator of all of the Rumbles Lifestyle Hub, which is where we store all our digital cookbooks and our digital community and videos and online community. And my job is to make healthy eating fun, delicious, exciting, spectacular, a grand adventure that is something we look forward to doing. And it is a beautiful job because I get to hang out with you guys all the time. And tonight we are actually celebrating because it is January, um, in case you didn't know. And I'm just looking for my slide. How do I get rid of this? I don't know how to get rid of this cake picture. 
Anyway, <laughs> we are celebrating our January cookbook and our January cookbook sale and we are investigating our cake module. Now many of you have been uh, sending me private messages asking me what on earth is the Rumbles Lifestyle Hub about? What are these modules about? You talk about cookbooks and modules and videos. Um, and tonight at the end of the show, if you want to hold on and watch, I will explain it fully for you. I will take you through everything so that you know and you can make a decision of um, if you want to join or not. But a lot of you I see here are already members. But let me tell you, if you've ever come up with an excuse not to eat healthy, that um, healthy is too hard, healthy tastes disgusting, healthy is expensive, healthy is boring, I just can't be bothered. If you've ever used any of those excuses, then you're going to want to stay around and listen to what exactly all our interactive cookbooks are about because we teach you to look at a range of healthy ingredients and know from memory how to turn them into cakes like we're going to be making today. So stick around for the end of the show so I can tell you more about our January cookbook sale and how you can get up to 40% off. But let's dive into the show. Um, so Lee, I can see you guys are still all talking about your favorite cakes there, which is exciting. But we are going to replace, there I can get rid of that picture now. We are going to help you stop craving those cakes, if you don't crave them already, with the donut cakes that we're going to learn to make tonight. So, what are we even doing tonight? Oop, where am I? There I am. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. Hello. It's funny, this um, online software I use, all of a sudden I'm big and then I'm small. Anyway, we're going to quickly talk about why we're programmed to want to eat cake. It's not because we're willpower weaklings. It's actually biological. So this is interesting. Why sometimes we still want to down the double fudge chalk caramel Oreo cream cake with all the toppings, like all of them, hundreds and thousands whipped cream, crumbled chocolate, even though we know it's not good for us, why we still do eat it, even though we technically don't want to because we know it's not the best for us, but we, we eat it anyway. Well, some of us do. Um, why we can still eat cake as part of a healthy diet and how to make those super delicious, moist, dense, oh, just amazing choc no, not chocolate, uh, muffin donuts. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, let me get rid of this slide and let's talk about why we're programmed to eat cake. Does anyone have any idea? Does anyone know? Hi, Karen. Welcome. <laughs> Does anybody know why it is we, we want to eat cake? Now, type here in the comments there. I'm going to keep talking on and um, maybe some of you will agree with me. So, our bodies are actually still thinking that they live in the prehistoric time of caveman. Our modern day way of eating and being has only been around for 200 years, yet humans have been around for millions of years. Our place on this planet as we know it now is like a tiny pinprick upon a pinprick on a, on a pinprick of evolution. So, um, <laughs> Michael, because they taste great. Yes, they do taste great. That, that is definitely a reason why. But, um, back in the day, back, we should have, where's Boomy? Where is Boomy? I think he's out playing with some goannas or something. It's Australia Day tomorrow, so he's gone to find all the Australian reptiles and marsupials to round them up for a good old Australia Day barbecue. So I'll tell the story for him. Like millions of years ago, um, cavemen were always expecting a famine of some sort. You know, there might be a drought, there might be an ice age, and what the body was actually programmed to do whenever it found some form of sugar which was very rare back then, you know, there might have been an odd beehive or there might have been an odd berry in the summer. Um, the body always thought maybe it's going to go into starvation. So whenever it found sugar, it would tell the human being to gorge on it. It would be like, eat as much of that as possible because pending doom is coming and you need to fatten up so that you can survive. So have you ever experienced that feeling when you eat some form of sugar, 
that you just can't stop, that you just want to keep downing it and downing it and downing it until you're like passed out on the ground with drool coming out your mouth like Homer Simpson going blah. That's because the body has no stop signal when it comes to sugar, specifically refined sugar, because it wants you to eat it. So we're not willpower weaklings for wanting to eat sugar. It's just that we're programmed to actually be um, eating lots of it um, because of that doom that's coming. So um, Kobe understands what that feels like. Um, or playing with a wombat, Maxine. Yes, maybe Boomy is playing with a wombat. We're rounding him up for the Australia Day barbecue. So that is why we're programmed to eat cake. We're modern beings living in a prehistoric body. So remember that next time you crave cake, don't feel guilty, don't punish yourself for wanting the sugar. Um, it's just something that we're programmed to, to want. So in a nutshell, that's it. Um, and let's move on to point two. So, that's a bit of the reason why we still down the cake, you know, when you're at a party and there's the buffet of cupcakes and cheesecakes and, you know, they're not healthy for you and you're like, I'm not going to eat them, I'm not going to eat them. But then you might say, oh, I'll have just a little slither and then you have that little slither and sometimes that turns into two or three or four pieces. Um, well, there's another reason why, not just the biological reason, but there's also an emotional, psychological reason. And um, as most of you know, I'm a counsellor. I work uh, as an EFT tapping practitioner and also as a weight loss coach, coach um, helping people to lose weight and to have a healthy relationship with their body and food. And the thing is, we have so many stories attached to food. We have something in our head. Does anyone know what that thing is inside our head? For some of us, sometimes it feels like marshmallow um, because we get stressed and confused. But there is a brain and human beings have this thing called the frontal lobe, which is like a filing cabinet. And it stores all our experiences. This brain inside our head is just like a relic. All it's doing is going, I'm going to store that experience, I'm going to store that experience, and I'm going to file them away, file away, file away, file away, so that as I go through life, I've got something to compare what's happening now with something that happened in the past so I can understand what's going on. The only reason I know what this computer is is because I've had so many experiences with it and I've learned what it is. The only reason I know what this fridge over here is or microwave is because I've had so many experiences with it and I've stored that away in my brain so that I know how to interpret it now and how to use it now. And that's the same when it comes to food. And we're going to talk specifically about cake right now. Growing up, we've had birthday parties, we've had um, engagements, we've had all sorts of celebrations. In fact, every celebration generally has a cake involved. Can you think of a celebration where cake wasn't involved? Even funerals, people have cakes. There's so many stories attached to cake, specifically in the Western world. Now, if we were brought up in a country where they don't eat cake, um, we could put a cake down in front of you and you'd be like, what's that? looks pretty, but I have no idea what it is. Can we like, you know, do a dance around it? <laughs> it would mean nothing to you. You wouldn't want to eat it because you've never had an experience with it. So that's another reason why we want to eat the cake. Now the human body is always trying to do one of two things. It's trying to get into pleasure or trying to get away from pain. And what does cake actually do? What purpose does it serve out of those two things? It serves the purpose of both of them, doesn't it? It helped in the moments of stress, in moments of um, tiredness, in moments of overwhelm. Imagine just sinking your teeth into something sweet and doughy and amazing. It takes away pain and puts people into pleasure. Not only that, because we've had so many experiences with cake growing up with our families and birthdays and celebrations, when we're in pain, we automatically put our safety and solution and love into things we believe have given us love. So we turn to food. Many people turn to food. So cake is all those parts. Every time you have a piece of cake, you're eating a piece of your past, which is a beautiful thing, but it can be painful for people who are trying to stick to a healthier way of eating. So does that make sense to you? Let me know. Give me a little yes in there 
in the comments if that makes sense. And I wonder if anyone wants to share a happy celebration they've had. What's that one experience with cake you've had that really, really stands out? I remember mine was that um, train cake from the Woman's Weekly Cookbook. Who remembers the Woman's Weekly Cookbook and there was that train cake? I always wanted the train cake. And one day, my mum surprised me and made me the train cake for my birthday. <laughs> um, who else had that Woman's Weekly Cookbook, the cake cookbook growing up? I used to read it like a storybook. I loved it. I was like, I'm going to have the witch cake or I'm going to have the ghost cake. I'm going to have the Barbie doll cake or the swimming pool cake. There were so many of those um, cakes that I wanted to have. All right, so that's another reason why we still eat the unhealthy cake. It's not because we biologically want it, it's because we emotionally want it. And that's why we're making donut muffins paleo style tonight so that you can have your cake, satisfy your biological need for it, satisfy your emotional need for it, and feel satisfied. How does that sound? <laughs> I hope that sounds like something good. We made, oh, Maxine made the train cake for her brother's birthday. Cool. It's a bit of a um, hard cake to make. I'm not that I've made it before, but it looks kind of technical. All right. So I didn't even look at my notes to make sure I covered everything. <laughs> but let's get into why our Donut muffin cakes are such a good idea for you to eat as part of a healthy way of eating or being or living. Ah, there we go. Ah, there I am. Um, just checking your comments. My Nana made the most of Oh, Isn't cake just really... I think of cake and I think of my Nana too. Nanas are just nothing but warm bundles of love, in my experience anyway. And so um, cake gives you that warm bundle of love feeling, doesn't it? My mum and I would always go, I can't quite see the end of your comment there, Selena. Um, I was always given the custard, said Natalie. And I think some of your comments are being cut off on my thing there. Oh, Maxine had the castle cake. Yes, the castle cake was cool. I never got the castle cake. Hi, Beck. Oh, our paleo nutrition, our, our Rumble's paleo nutritionist is online. So if we have any nutrition questions regarding cake, type them in the comments there and Beck can help you out. And Beck's actually come on at a good time because we're talking about why cake can be a healthy part of a diet. So why is our healthy paleo, and actually Beck's on holiday. So she's watching this on her holiday. She's at um, Lake Centrance. If anyone's there, Go knock on her door, take her a cup of tea, sit down and watch this with her. <laughs> um, sorry, Beck, just telling everyone where you are. <laughs> All right. Um, Michael loves cheesecake. All right. So let's talk about um, why you should, why not why you should, but why paleo donut muffins can be a healthy part of your life. Now, I must put in a disclaimer here, guys. This information just comes in a broad general sense. We don't take into consideration any individual um, conditions or um, illnesses you may have and we always recommend that you see a medical practitioner before you take on any form of new diet or new way of eating. This is just a little bit of tidbits of information to help you and get you thinking of new possibilities and new ways to make healthy eating fun. So I just needed to throw in that disclaimer there. <laughs> so why it's healthy to eat paleo donut muffins? One, they taste good, like Michael said before, and they make us feel good, which gives us something that I like to call vitamin P. Does anyone know what the P stands for? Uh, vitamin P stands for vitamin pleasure. <laughs> so many of us, me included, I do this, we're just rushing to get through our days. We've got to get through our to-do list and we don't give ourselves permission to enjoy ourselves, to stop and smile, to stop and smell the roses or to stop and smell the cake in the oven. And pleasure is so important to putting ourselves into that parasympathetic relaxation response, which puts the body into optimal digestive um, capabilities, optimal calorific burning possibilities, optimal metabolism, optimal everything. So it's so important that we take time, specifically when we're eating our cakes, to sit 
and just be with the cake. Maxine will be laughing at this. Just be with the cake and enjoy it. Breathe. Take in that oxygen. Oxygen fires up the metabolism. It fires up your digestion and just let it go. So if you are choosing to have cake, whether it be paleo cake or unpaleo cake, give yourself a bit of permission to slow down and enjoy it. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> when we eat these paleo donut muffins, we of course don't want some of the other cakes anymore. Krispy Kreme, I talk about donuts a bit because donuts are one of my weaknesses. Um, I don't really have them very, maybe once a year, but donuts was a go-to thing for me. Um, the paleo muffins I'm about to show you are made with really amazing ingredients. They've got egg, lots of eggs in them, coconut flour, um, ghee or butter, and they are really satiating to the body. They're good, healthy fats, which actually makes us feel full. Regular cake is full of sugar and flours, very refined carbohydrates, which actually don't um, satiate the brain or tell the brain that it's had nutrition. So we... Um, Crave more food later on. Be with the sandwich. Maxine is laughing now. Um, um, lots of eggs so we get that protein boost. Now, Beck will confirm with me on this. Uh, when we eat the little bit of natural sugar that is in these muffins, they've got honey or maple in them. When we combine that with the protein from the egg and the fat from the eggs and the butter or oil, which you'll learn about now, it actually slows down that blood sugar spike we get if the fat and protein were absent. Okay, so when we combine healthy fats and protein with this natural sugar, we get that slow release of energy instead of the high um, sugar insulin spike, which would result from eating normal cake. And just correct me there, Beck, if I'm wrong. <laughs> and lastly, I just wanted to confirm, should we be eating these cakes all the time? We always promote here to eat a balanced diet. No, you shouldn't eat cake all day, every day, no matter what type of cake it is. You need your veggies, you need more protein, and you need your vitamins and nutrients from a wide range of foods, okay? So don't eat cake all day. Even don't eat these cakes every day. Have them every now and then to satiate that sweet tooth and those cravings you might get for something sugary or sweet. All right, so... Now, hello. <laughs> I hope that all made sense, guys. Can you see how having one of these cakes every now and then can actually help you stick to a healthier way of eating? Um, I know when I was switching over to a paleo way, I, made, I ate cookies. Believe it or not, you will believe it because I now have a cookie company. Um, cookies were my go-to. I would make these Rumbles Paleo, which are now Rumbles Paleo cookies, and they would help to satisfy it by my sweet tooth and because they're made with lots of nuts, they actually filled me up, which is the great thing about our products and which is why I still eat them every week. All right, so we are going to, now, this is what we're going to make tonight. Now, at any time, if you want to get the direct link to these recipes, just type muffin in the, in the comments there. Muffin in the comments. You'll get a message sent to your messenger, hopefully. Can someone test that out for me to make sure it works? I did test it out, but sometimes what I test doesn't transfer into working for you guys. Um, type it in, and I actually have to get you to double opt in. So you'll get a message to say type in another word because we need to make sure we have your permission to actually send it to you. That's a thing that Facebook makes us do. So um, let me know if that actually is working. Cookies help Lisa as well. People are typing, hi Lisa Williamson, uh, hi Le other Lisa. I can never know how to pronounce your name, Lisa, Lisa Colcoon. Lisa, I never know how to say it. And let me know if that is working. Maxine, is it, oh Rhonda, great, it's working. All right, so let's make our muffins. There they are on the screen. I made some the other day. Ah, oh, there they are. Look at them. They're beautiful, aren't they? I haven't eaten them all, and I have, have stopped my family members from eating them all, which is great. Um, we're going to make those right now. So let me get rid of this. Where are we? And let's look at the ingredients. I'm just going to pop this down so you can see. 
First of all, we're going to get into our bowl and I'm going to talk you through some of these ingredients and the ingredients and brands I choose to use and why it is I choose to use them. And I'm going to give you a few cooking tips as well. So just hang around. So in our bowl, now paleo baking is so easy. It's so forgiving and it's so loving. You can do anything to it and it works. It just works. <laughs> Maybe not anything, but it works. <laughs> so in my bowl, I've got my all my wet ingredients. I've got, I think it's about a third a cup of fat. Now the fat you can choose from, you can choose any of these. You can choose olive oil. You can choose to use butter. Butter does contain dairy. So if you're avoiding dairy, don't use butter. You can use ghee as well. So they're the three fats you can choose to use from. Butter gives a more buttery flavor, of course, and olive oil gives it a more, you can't taste the olive oil, but it's, it gives the cake a denser, a denserness. Is denserness a word to, to it? <laughs> um, and then we've got, then you can use another liquid. You've got to use about a third of a cup of a particular type of milk. You can use nut milk. You can use coconut milk. Um, you can use dairy milk if you choose to use dairy, that's fine. It's up to you. Remember, this is paleo for you. However you do paleo, however you do your real food eating, you know what's best for you, so you decide. As I always say, coconut milk, don't buy coconut milk um, in the big coconut milk stuff. Buy coconut cream and water it down. It's so much cheaper. I'm always trying to give you guys affordable ways to be healthy because it does cost more than going to McDonald's or it does cost more than going to the fish and chip shop, but um, you can make it affordable as well and it tastes better once you get used to it. So water it down, you know, about half, half, one to one ratio of coconut cream and water will give you uh, the measurement you need. And you need four eggs. Actually, now this recipe I'm making tonight gives you six muffins. The recipes you'll download will give you 12 muffins. So I'm doing half the amount and you can halve the amount in the recipe as well. Four eggs. The secret to cracking eggs. Does anyone know what the secret to cracking eggs is besides throwing them at your partner's head? That works. It does. <laughs> is to not, you don't, don't crack them on the side of the bowl. What happens when you do that is the shell goes, can go into the bowl, into the bowl. The best way to crack your egg is on a flat surface. So crack it on the flat surface and then crack it into your bowl. And that way you won't get any shell into your mixture. Hot tip, that one, hot tip. I think I learned that watching um, Jeff Jantz on his cooking show many years ago. I loved Jeff Jantz and I often talk about him because I think he's what inspired me to want to cook. Um, there we go. And sweetener. You put some sweetener in here as well. Use honey or maple. Uh, don't use maple syrup. Use fresh Canadian maple syrup. Don't use imitation syrup, I should say, because that's just sugar. It's just sugar that they've done something to to turn it into a syrup, like chocolate syrup or, or um, strawberry syrup. So get the pure Canadian maple syrup. Thanks, Co Yeah, good tip. Thanks, Kobe. Um, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm here for, for good tips. And when it comes to honey, um, you know that saying, oils ain't oils? <laughs> I always remember that as a kid and Rhonda told me what that was actually ad for. Honeys ain't honeys, okay? Um, honey is like wine. It comes in so many different flavors. And at Rumbles, we've done lots of different honey tastings and it's such a fun thing to do because they can taste anywhere. It can taste like orange or it can taste like eucalyptus. It's fascinating. Um, but the thing with your typical honeys on the shelf, like your Capilano honeys, you might as well be using sugar because they're so heat treated that all the goodness is taken out and you're just left with pretty much sugar. So if you're using the normal Capilano honeys or what other brands, um, it's, it's just the same as sugar. So I always, I get this one from the supermarket. It's a raw honey. You want to get raw honey as if you can, um, you know, if you can't, well, you can't, but if you can get the raw honey, um, it's not heat treated or very minimally, and it's still got a lot of the vitamins and nutrients and stuff left in it. So do that. Lisa uses rice malt syrup. Yes, you can use rice malt syrup as well. You can substitute rice malt syrup um, as well. So you need a quarter to a third of a cup of sweetener. Now, paleo for you, doesn't matter if you use a quarter or a third, depends on how sweet you like things and how much you want, um, how much sugar content you want in your food. 
So we're making the base of the muffins here, I, I should tell you. Um, and I'll show you the lemon curd and the jam because the donuts we're making a jam and lemon curd or lime curd filled. So now we've got our dry ingredients and these are nut free. Now when it comes to paleo baking, we get it all the time at Rumble's Paleo. Do you do anything without nuts? Because we want to give it to the kids. And we do have a nut free range. It's just not released yet. Um, the Chindi cookies that we make with Pete Evans, they're nut free. That's the only nut free one we've got at the moment. But I think Maxine, have you tried our nut free cookies, the other range? I think you might have, they're amazing. So all you've got is about 80 grams of coconut flour in here, a half a teaspoon of salt, and you can use a teaspoon of baking soda or baking powder. Either one, it doesn't matter. I find um, bicarb rises more uh, than baking soda, but they're both going to do the job. All right, so then you just pour the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. And the thing with coconut flour, as most of you probably know, it's so super absorbent. It's three times more absorbent than regular flour. So you cannot do a one-to-one -one substitute. If you're trying to um, recreate one of your favorite cakes that uses wheat uh, and flour, you cannot do replace one cup of flour with one cup of coconut flour. It's just not going to work. Look how thick and gluggy this is going. Coconut flour is three times more absorbent than normal flour. It needs heaps and heaps and heaps of liquid. All right. So that's it. That's our muffin base. And what you're going to make in the recipes, what you'll get is a recipe for curd. Now look at that. Tell me, does that look spectacular or what? It's rich, it's lush, and it's completely paleo, and it tastes like normal lemon curd. Oh, this is actually lime. I did a lime curd. And all, it, all you need is the citrus fruit. You can use lime or lemon or oranges, um, eggs, um, honey, something else. It's in the recipe there. Eggs, honey, oh, and a fat. You can use ghee, coconut oil, or butter. They work with any of the fats. I've tried them all, and they all taste really good. So what you do with the ingredients, remember just type muffin in the comments there and you'll get the link sent to you to get the recipe. All you do is put all your ingredients in a saucepan on the stove top and stir them together with a, with a whisk for about five minutes continuously over a low heat. Now you have to be careful because the eggs might start to scramble. So that's why it needs to be a really low temperature and you need to be stirring constantly. But don't worry if they do start to scramble. Mine did because what you do is you pour the, the syrup through a sieve and you push it all out. You push out all the lumps. So don't stress if you start to get scrambled eggs, okay? Um, and I tell you what, I gave this curd to my mum and she's... She likes my savoury cooking. She's not big on my cakes, and my paleo cakes, um, but she loves this. And she's a citrus fanatic. Who else is a citrus fanatic? Who loves lemon curd? I can see Rhonda loves lemon curd. Denise has so many lemons on her tree. Hopefully you can send them to us. And Rhonda gets honey straight from the hive. Rhonda, you have so many great access to so many things. And Michael has um, his own, his mates have his own beehives as well. So... Lucky people, I maybe it might put some out in my backyard. Or maybe we should put some up at Rumbles in our factory. <laughs> All right. So let's put these together. Now the jam, the jam is the easiest jam recipe in the world. You just get frozen raspberries. The recipe is in the recipe um, sheet there. And microwave them with a bit of honey. Or you can do it on the bench top. I know a lot of people don't like to use microwaves. Uh, and that's fine. So you just put it in a saucepan with a little bit of honey and until it goes syrupy and that's it that's how easy it is my friends to make jam none of this i don't have time it's too hard it can be easy and this is what we teach you to do in the rumbles lifestyle hub easy stuff <laughs> so um selena loves lemon curd let's make the muffins let's put them together so the recipe gives you enough for 12. you can halve it and make enough for six and what you just do is you spoon about a tablespoon of mixture into, whoa, it's going everywhere, into your patty pans and you just hollow it out a bit. You want to make sure you've got a little nest, a little nest for your little baby curd. <laughs> Put it in there. 
Um, and you're going to do that in all the tart shells there. Can you see that? I've just made a little nest. Oh, we could probably fit Rhonda in that nest. We'll put you in there, Rhonda, and we'll bake you in a muffin. Like that, like that nursery rhyme. Four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie in a muffin. We've got four and twenty Rondas baked in a muffin. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> then, just making myself laugh here. What did I do with my curd? Where did it go? Oh, here it is. <laughs> All right. You just get a teaspoon of your jam or your curd and spoon it into, wow, into your muffin there. And then you're just going to put on top, my air conditioner is on and it's blowing stuff everywhere. <laughs> um, you're going to put some more mixture on top. Sprinkle it with coconut and even put a little bit more curd or jam on top so that you get a nice little jammy, coconutty muffin like that. <laughs> and that's how you make... <laughs> oh dear, Kobe's inserting evil laugh. I make myself laugh. Um, my boyfriend Dave's always just looking at me because I'm, I'm just laughing because I laugh at myself. If you can't laugh at yourself, what can you laugh at? Any questions about how to make those muffins there, let me know. I'd love to know if you have any questions. Um, I don't know how to make Ronda jam. All right, I'm leaving this. Let's not make this joke anymore. <laughs> but again, type the word muffin into the comments there and you shall get the link sent to you for that recipe. I will post it up um, as well. So um, that's our donut muffin episode. But wait, <laughs> if you'd like to learn more about our cookbook sale, I'm just going to take, if it's all right with you guys, I'm going to take three or four minutes to explain that for those of you who aren't members. Kobe's already a member. Rhonda's already a member. Uh, Maxine's already a member. Lots of people are already a member. Trin says it's nice to see you with uh, your comments cut off there. So I can't really cut that. I can't really see the end of your comment there, Selena. But hello, Trinity, as well. All right, so let's talk about our, um, our January cookbook sale. There we go. So this recipe comes from our – oh, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. You have berry jam in the fridge. Great. <laughs> this recipe comes from our cake module inside the Rumbles Lifestyle Hub. Now I'm just going to share my screen with you if I can do it. Here we go. From inside the Rumbles Lifestyle Hub. Now the Rumbles Lifestyle Hub is, whoop, yeah, this is actually our online platform where we host all our cookbooks and our videos and all our modules. And it's what we call an online healthy cooking school because we don't just give you recipes like a regular cookbook and, you know, show you what you can make. What we actually do is we give you systems for cooking. So we give you strategies and we might give you a strategy for making cake, frittatas, breads, and then we'd show you how to tweak the ingredients so that one or two recipes can become 50 to a million recipes and we don't just give you these downloadable books either. We actually give you video demonstrations as well. So currently, um, if you go to the Rumbles Paleo website, the cookbook sale is here and any individual cook module, we call them modules actually, any one of our modules, um, which I'll show you down here, we have ice cream, an ice cream module, a frittata module, the cake module, the dip module, you can see them all on our website. There's 10 of them in total. And with every single module, you had a beautifully photographed. I took all the photographs myself. I spent six months putting, making these books and making these videos. And um, with each module, you get this downloadable book. You get video dem demonstrations on how to actually use the recipes and how to adapt them. And um, you've got them all for 33% off. So it's not just a book you put on your shelf and use once or twice and maybe forget about. It's something that you learn. To, it gets in your head. And you're like, oh, I learned that strategy in the dip module. So now I can make 20 different dips because I know that strategy. Um, that's what we teach you to do. So each module at the moment is only like $12. 
which is crazy. $12 is really cheap. And what you actually do, you don't just get the books, you don't just get the um, videos, you also get our private Facebook community here where we actually um, have monthly challenges. So at the moment, we've got a spice challenge going on. We're all investigating our spice module. And as you can see, we're making roast chickens with them. We're butterflying chickens and we're turning them into one pot meals here. Uh, that's what uh, Rhonda made. You can see that Denise was making it as well. So every month we have a new cooking challenge so you can actually put to work what it is you've learned from inside the module and you have a supportive community where we all do the same thing together, which is really exciting. So that's what you get when you purchase any of the modules. So when you purchase any module, it's 33% off. When you purchase them in total, you buy all 10 together, you get 40% off, and you also get two free bonuses. You get bonus one, which is this two-hour cookbook, and we show you how to take recipes from inside all the modules and make a week's worth of healthy meals and snacks in just two hours for less than $50, because as I said, we want to make healthy cooking and eating affordable for you and easy and you also get this healthy shopping list so that you can print that off take it with you to the shops and you always know what ingredients are real food ingredients what ingredients we promote for you to use so that's what you get and I think that this could be quite transformational because these are the strategies I use I like to systemize everything. When I was transforming over to a real food way of eating, I'm like, how can I make this easy? How can I just know offhand how to cook things? And I created these systems. And that's what I put, took six months to put together into what we call the Rumbles Lifestyle Hub. So you can head to rumblespaleo.com.au forward slash cookbook hyphen sale uh, forward slash or just go to rumblespaleo.com.au that's easier and you'll see a big image up there that says cookbook sale and there's only one week left to go just think about how that could transform your life and I can see everybody there having a wonderful conversation which I've completely missed out on so that my friends let me come back to you how do I get back um do 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 I'm trying. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Alrighty, everybody. That is our, I don't know how to get rid of that. <laughs> that is our show for tonight. Who this weekend is going to go and make donut muffins? Put your hands up. Write an amen in the, call, in the comments if you're going to do that. <laughs> um, and I'm just trying to just read the recipe one. I'm trying to catch up with your comments, but I can't. Happy Australia Day for tomorrow, everybody. And I so love having you here each week. It really is a labor of love. It's not a labor at all. I consider you all family and all friends. And so um, it's glorious to have you here. Have a wonderful Australia Day. Have a wonderful weekend. And I will be back next week, guys. Alrighty. I think I've covered everything. <laughs> All right. Good night.